Potentators! Hi! Hi, and welcome back to another reaction video. This time we're going to be checking out a different country to America. Mm -hmm. We're going to go diving into the world of Canada. If you guys haven't seen our last food reaction, where we tried uh, we tried some snacks sent from Timothy in Canada, Timmy, which we absolutely loved. Yeah, Timmy. Yep, Timmy. So we are going to check out the history of Canada here. The history of Canada explained in ten minutes. I felt like we went into that food reaction with not much knowledge at all of Canada. No, I didn't even know they spoke French there. <laughs> yeah. So these are all all things new to us here. Yeah. So and this is uh, this looks like another video. I couldn't find one on the Oversimplified channel, which is one that we usually check out. Oh, yeah. But I found one here that's about 10 minutes long, and it looks like it's using, like, cartoons or graphics and stuff like that. So Similar format. Yeah, just, you know, easier for the kids to follow along. Okay. So, yeah, what are you guys expecting from Canada? What are you, Do you guys know anything about Canada? No, all I know is that they're Canadian. They're, they're Canadian. Canadian? Yeah. What, well... Like, what, what's a famous food that you know of from Canada? That we have in our fridge. What? That we have on pancakes. Maple syrup. Yeah, maple of course. syrup. Oh my god. And their the, the, symbol is a maple leaf, yeah, right? Yeah, in the middle of their flag is a maple leaf. That's yeah. how you make, that's what you get maple syrup from. That's yeah. their jam. Yeah. And what about animals? Do you guys know any Canadian animals? Moose. A moose? Deer? They have deer there. Probably, I'd imagine they've got yeah, huge forests. Benzie, can you think of a Canadian animal? Um, the beaver. Yep, the beaver. Yeah, so but we might find out some more in this video, or maybe yeah. not. I don't know. This might be this might be more of like an actual historical thing where you like you know with the people and which countries came in and took the territory and hmm. you know who. I'm guessing France. Who did what to who? Yeah, that's a good guess. Mm -hmm. Solid guess that one. Thanks. All right, let's check it out. Wow, There's a lot of it's huge small lakes and rivers and everything. Canada. Yeah. Known for their delicious maple syrup, and being home to nearly all of the greatest hockey players of all time, is the second largest nation on earth, and with approximately 2 million lakes, contains over 50% of the freshwater lakes on the planet. For many thousands of years, this region okay. was populated with many indigenous tribes of hardy people, capable of overcoming the severe and lengthy winters, thriving, and developing unique cultures. The first non-native people to settle in Canada and the New World in general that we wow. know of for All sure, the tribes. were the Vikings. They built a settlement in Newfoundland, around 1000 AD. It wow. is unclear for exactly how long this settlement was occupied for, or if there was wow. more, but ultimately, it was either abandoned, pillaged, or its inhabitants succumbed to disease, or assimilated into the local population. But theories abound. Nearly 500 years later, in 1497, the Italian explorer, Giovanni Capotto, was the first European to explore North America's coast, claiming it for the English crown. Shortly after, the Spanish and the Portuguese would do the same, but remained uncolonized for several decades, with only a few seasonal Portuguese and Basque fishing outposts built, until the French arrived. Jacques Cartier claiming the land for France in 1534, he named the Gulf and River after St. Lawrence's feast day on which he arrived. The French called oh. the territory around the river Canada, after the native word for settlement. After several failed attempts at permanent settlement succumbed to starvation and disease, the cities of Quebec and Port Royal were successfully established. By 1670, the English colonies in the South had expanded, and new settlements were established in Newfoundland and south of the Hudson Bay. The fur trade, Hudson Bay particularly in beaver pelts, became extremely lucrative, as it became the favored yeah. material for hat makers and luxury winter clothing in Northern Europe. This greatly encouraged further northern settlement by both That's English like beaver, and French uh, fur trappers yeah. seeking to make a fortune. Possum the French and the English did not peacefully coexist, with the French temporarily taking much of the territory around the Hudson Bay Wars. during the lengthy period known as the Beaver Wars. Not only the Europeans became wealthy and influential from the trade in beaver pelts, the Iroquois Confederation of six powerful tribes, armed with European firearms, initially allied with Dutch merchants, 
and then the English, to aggressively attack the French and most other Indian tribes in the region to obtain more furs. Many of these tribes banded together with the French to halt Iroquois expansion. Peace was negotiated after 72 years of fighting and many, mostly Indian lives lost, and little territorial change. The region of New France was comprised of several colonies. Canada and Louisiana were the largest, along with the smaller Placence oh, and wow. Acadia, it goes which the, the British the Empire obtained from America. the French in the Treaty of Utrecht in wow. 1713 in a complicated agreement concerning the War of Spanish Succession. France also recognized the legitimacy of the Hudson Bay Company's claim over Rupert's land. Interestingly, the Hudson Bay Company is still in existence today, primarily as owners of a retail store chain huh. bearing their name. Despite their larger territory, the French increasingly became outnumbered by the rapidly growing British colonies surrounding them, by a margin of 10 to 1 by the time the next major conflict between the two occurred. During the Seven Years' War, or the French and Indian War, as it has become known in much of North America, French-speaking Acadians were deported far from the Canadian borderlands, some of whom formed the basis of much of the Cajun population of modern-day Louisiana and New Orleans. Both English and French empires sent thousands of regular infantry to North America during the war, supported by local militias and Indian tribes. The greatly outnumbered French relied heavily on Indian allies and fought the British to a standstill early in the war, until the British successfully besieged the cities of Quebec and Montreal. Despite the French later defeating the British in a pitched battle, they failed to retake their capital city. In the treaty that ended the war soon after, France ceded Canada to Britain while giving Louisiana oh. territory to her ally, Spain. It's it is Spain. important to note at this yeah. time, much of Do you guys life... remember learning about the yellow uh, land in Spain in oversimplified videos? We were always like, what's that big yellow blob on the left yeah. there? Is that just like unclaimed land? But no, apparently it was Spain. It's Spain, okay. Who owns all of that. Yeah. And that's why people in Mexico speak Spanish. Gosh, it's... Yeah. That's why Spanish is in, in Mexico. Wow. Yeah. So we always wondered. But yeah, it, it actually came right up into Canada too. Wow. That's a lot of land. Yeah, it is. It's huge. America's non-coastal areas were still largely unpopulated, with many of the native tribes heavily depleted through warfare and invasive diseases from which they had little immunity. With a population of approximately 3 million, the American colonies waged a successful rebellion oh, wow. against the British crown. A little over a decade later, the Americans attempted and failed to take Quebec, which remained loyal to Great Britain. After the war, many British wow. loyalists moved north into Canada. During the following War of 1812, both British and American armies launched several failed invasions of each other's territory, ending in military stalemate, and the status quo was maintained. On fire. The treaties following the war established a more formalized border between the two nations. Oh, Despite the Canadians' yeah. desire not to join their American neighbors to the south, movements for self-rule increasingly grew among the Canadian lower and middle classes, culminating in the rebellions of 1837 and 38 that were severely dealt with and crushed, and saw the short-lived Republic of Canada established by William Lloyd Mackenzie. Whoa. Despite the Republic's short-lived lifespan and diminutive size, That's widespread public flag. support, yeah. not only from many Canadians, both French and English-speaking, but also from Americans to the South, spurred Great Britain's government to make major concessions in the rebellion's aftermath. The Act of Union in 1840 united Upper and Lower Canada into the new province of Canada, and the granting of responsible government soon after allowed for a far greater degree of self-rule to be exercised by the elected representatives of the people. In 1846, the disputed Oregon Territory was peaceably divided between Great Britain and the United States, pretty much by drawing a straight line and giving Vancouver Island to Canada. Throughout the 19th century, a massive boom in the logging industry fueled large waves of immigration to Canada, gradually replacing the fur trade as Canada's most lucrative industry. In 1867, the British North America Act, or more commonly called the Constitution Act today, established Canada as a self-governing democracy with Ottawa as its capital city. To the west, the Hudson's Bay Company negotiated the sale of Rupert's land to the newly formed Canadian government. The Métis people of mixed European, primarily French, and Indian ancestry were the largest population of the Winnipeg area of what is now Manitoba. Fearing the land they had held for generations would be seized by newcomers from the east, they rose in rebellion, creating a provisional government. And after a tense standoff and eventual occupation by federal troops, many of their demands were met, respecting their rights. The leader of the rebellion, Louis Riel, would lead another larger but less successful rebellion 
15 years later, that ended with his trial and execution. Louis Riel became a martyr, or villain, to many Canadians, his death increasing the tensions between Indian Métis, English, and French groups in society. Because of the key role the partially completed transcontinental railway played in the suppression of the rebellion, political support for completing it soared among English-speaking Canadians, and the railroad was completed in only four years. Does that railroad still exist? exist? The 1890s saw the Klondike Gold Rush, in which over 100,000 prospectors set out to the remote Yukon region in hopes of striking it rich. Gold Some rush. did, but most didn't. After several decades of stagnant population growth, largely due to emigration to the United States, Canada's population sharply increased due to a good economy and high foreign immigration throughout the early 20th century. During the First World War, Canada, still a dominion of the United Kingdom, sent 620,000 troops, 67,000 would die, while another 173,000 would be wounded. The staggering casualty rate grieved and shocked the nation. The war had a strong impact on Canadian nationalism and the desire to self-govern its own international affairs, mm. which they obtained when the British Parliament passed the Statute of Westminster in 1931, which acknowledged Canada's co-equal status with the United Kingdom. Between the world wars, Canada was hit particularly hard during the Great Depression of the early 1930s, with unemployment rates reaching 25%, and many men living in unemployment relief camps. During the Second World War, over 1.1 million Canadians served. In that brutal conflict, and left nearly 100,000 of them dead or wounded. 1. 1 in 1949, Newfoundland became the last Canadian province to incorporate. In 1965, Canada adopted its current flag. Here's a selection of some of the other national flags that were proposed. Let me know in the comments of which one do you think looks best. In 1982, the Canada Act passed the Parliament of the United Kingdom and was ratified by the Queen, granting Canada the right to create their own constitution, which nice. they promptly did. Still recognizing the constitutional monarchy in a mostly ceremonial rule, <laughs> the new constitution abolished the British Parliament's remnants of influence over Canada. Canada is now a nation of over 36 million people, where over 20% speak French as a first language, and has the 10th largest economy in the world. The province of Quebec has maintained a strong French influence over the centuries, and has on two occasions voted in referendums to decide whether Quebec should proclaim national sovereignty and become an independent country. Wow. In 1995, it very nearly did not pass, with secession still being an issue till this day. This has been Epimetheus. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Wow. What Canadian province is your favorite to visit or live in? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notifications every time I make a new video. Yeah, make sure you go check out his channel. over on Patreon. That's pretty awesome. That was so informative. That was really informative. Yeah. I feel like I just got like, five years worth of like history classes yeah. in one video yeah but there's some really interesting points that i thought of it's like how crazy is it that even going back to america as well and how this actually overlapped what we learned in the oversimplified videos yeah because it went right down into america and like all the land disputes and everything yeah selling all the land but how crazy is it that we're only about four or five hundred years past the point of where this is all just like you know unexplored there I were know. tribes there were you know native people there yeah but how this was unexplored to like you know the western world yeah it was just this like half the planet was just you know still like nobody had uh, you know any idea well the the europeans had no idea what was out there yeah just this now we're now with everything that we know these days you know, with the internet, and you can just look at the globe, and you can just see where all the countries are, and it's like, oh yeah, that's that, and that's that. And the world is so accessible. Yeah, but back then they would have had all these incomplete maps, or just yeah. a map of what, like, their little area that they knew of. Anything outside of that was it's no idea. It's bizarre to even think about, eh? Yeah, had no idea what was going on. Yeah. But yeah, they also looked like they had quite a divisive history as well. Yeah, and they yeah. had to really fight yeah. for um, freedom. Yeah, a few the battles. Constitution. They had the word liberty on the flag. Yeah. So I wonder, I didn't actually see what flag they were using before the one, that the, this current one they chose in 1965, but did it have the British, were they just flying under the British flag? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Because we don't know, did it, or is it like us? Do they just have a little Union Jack in the corner or something? Maybe. Yeah. That was so interesting. Yeah, yeah it was really it was. interesting. Yeah, I actually, it makes me really want to visit now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I want to come want to come visit Timmy. Timmy! <laughs> <laughs> See, and also another thing I noticed was all the names. They're all very sort of, um, they're all different to America. Eh? They're really, they look, they look like they're influenced by the, the tribes. Yeah. Like Saskatchewan yeah. and like Winnipeg and... Ontario. Ontario. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really cool. It's, um, 
It looks like it's just, it's so much land. Yeah, it's huge. It's yeah. bigger than I thought it was. But I think someone, rem I remember someone telling me that it's 90% of the population of Canada all live in like the, like a, some sort of really small strip that goes like this. Really? All along the border, yep. Just because everything above that is so cold. So it's freezing. Yeah, so it gets really cold because then you're up into like the Arctic up Yeah, there. and so much water. Yeah, two million lakes. Two oh. million lakes. That's so Two cool. million lakes. I mean, two million of those we yeah. live right next to a lake yeah exactly anyway guys that was really cool we really enjoyed learning more about canada yeah i think it was about time we showed you guys some love yes so yeah thank you for the snacks and thank you for the history lesson yes so let us know down in the comments what else we should check what other countries we should take a look at i think mexico we, let's go south of the border I reckon, next. yeah we need to go do some more mexican stuff yeah learn more about them yeah we should do a snack reaction to mexican food yeah yeah we should time it in yeah That's yeah a we should good idea try and gather up some mexican snacks and yeah and have a little taste test but yeah anyway guys so smash the like button if you like this one comment down below like i said before subscribe follow us on instagram, instagram. that's the one and we'll see you in the next one see ya. bye